Hello everyone. Um, do you remember in an earlier lesson we looked at using chord tracks? So we chose four chords and we composed a um, basic song just using the chord track inside Cubase. I sort of mentioned chord assistant and said I would go back to that and have a look. So I thought really quickly, let's look at chord assistant. So if you've got Cubase, I think 8.5 onwards, you can use chord assistant. From Cubase 9 onwards, you've got these zones, they call them, and I'll show you how they work. But if you've got 8.5, I think you have to get to Chord Assistant by um, right-clicking and adding a chord track. And then when you click on the chord, Chord Assistant's on the right-hand side. But say you've got Cubase 9, let's look where we are. So talking about these um, zones, they're quite interesting. You see, just clicking on the left-hand side one takes away our inspector and visibility. So just we, we did look at this. This is where you can get all of your channel controls, you've got insert sends, these sort of things. We'll perhaps look at these in more detail as well, but we've also got the right hand side, and this is a great way of getting to your instrument racks, or if you want to add a new instrument, or media bay, which we looked at before. Now, I always do the old F5, just because I've started with Cubase years and years ago, and obviously the zonal system wasn't working then, and like an old dog, it's taken me a while to learn new tricks, but here, this is the one I really want to look at, this new lower zone. They're, I think Steinberg probably bought this in because other doors, um, Logic especially, were using the zonal sort of lower zone system. So if I just click on here, it's giving me, I've got, a, I've got my mixer there, so instead of doing the F3, you can actually go to the lower zone if you wanted to see your project running as well. You've got an editor, where if you've got MIDI information, you've got that highlighted, you can, it's like the piano roll you can get on there, or you can get audio editor. Sampler. Now this is really wicked, and we'll we'll look at this in much more detail. But this is the one I want to do today. Chord pads and chord assistant. They're the two, and they work quite well together. So we're going to look at firstly how this works. But at the moment, it's telling me I, I can't get any sound out of this at the moment because I'm I haven't assigned it. I haven't assigned a MIDI channel for it to work on. So the reason on this project I've still got these guitars here and the drums is because. Within the next couple of days, we will do a tutorial on recording guitars, panning guitars, layering guitars, and VST plugins built into Cubase. So that'll be quite cool. Okay, so I'm going to make a sound really quickly. I'm going to go to F5, Media Bay, because we've done that before. We're on piano, because obviously last time we were looking at pianos. So click on, double click on whatever, movie ballad, whatever. Okay, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about the, um, the um, thing itself. Now, I'm going to make a, a four bar loop. This ha just happens to be four bars long. So if I highlight it, press P, it sets the locators at the top for me. It's a really useful tool that. So, but I'm going to delete this information. So it's a good way of setting locators. So highlight whatever you want to edit. And if you want to put it on a loop, press P, it will set the locators automatically for you. But I'm just going to delete this. I'm then going to highlight it. Now, whatever we do in chord pads or chord assistant, it's going to trigger from this piano just because it's highlighted. So we've made an instrument to work. Okay, onto our lower zone. Now, fingers crossed. There we go. It gives you some chords, so it's starting in C. In all of this, it'll let you. There's all kinds of things you can do. So, the right hand side, you can change the voicings. Do you remember when we changed in one of the when we looked at the chord track we put the bass note and we made it a few octaves higher so we made an inversion they call it and if you click through these it'll give you all the different inversions in C major which is quite useful it, it, the way a chord inversion works or the voicing of a chord it can really help if you're going from one chord to the next to keep a continuity of notes, but also, say your first verse is different, it's the same chords as your second verse, you could perhaps use different inversions or chord voicing to make it sound slightly different. Or, say you've got a string section and you've got a piano, you've got the same chord, if one's got a different voicing, even though it's the same notes in the stack, because they're stacked differently, they can have a different sort of sound, so quite useful. Okay, and then along the bottom, we can actually run through 
going more complex as we go through the chords. So we've got a C, C9, that's a wicked chord, I like C9. One of my favourite chords of all time, C major 7. But quite cool again. So if you're in C and you're writing a song, how many people have written a, chord, a song in C, adding a C9 at the beginning, all of a sudden, you got something slightly more unusual, which is great. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to minimise this down slightly, just so I can see the piano, because I'm going to show you how we can drag one of these chords. So if I want a B7, and I want to add this into my track, I can actually just drag it in, and there he is. And then you can edit. Do you remember when we looked at staggering the chords, so we arpeggiated it, we made a broken chord? You can do inversions yourself then by just double-clicking on it going into the piano roll. Okay, do you see when I double clicked on it then, we've gone into this piano roll here. If I want to extend that out, here you go. So instead of the chord pad making the inversion, I can do it for myself now. I can go to MIDI, transpose, etc. Okay, sorry, let's get out of there. Right. And out of there. So we're back to where we are. I'm going to just delete that because I'm not interested in that B7, it's not going to be part of it. So, back to the lower zone, chord pads, and there we go. Now, so we've looked at how you can get different voicings from them, we've looked at um, different inversions or different voicings. Oh, sorry, comp that's how complex the chord is, added to chord, sorry. This was the inversions and the... This was how complex the chord was. Now, the thing I want to look at is chord assist or chord assistant or so it gives you this the circle of fifths which is um standard for writing music and music theory so it's a great thing to learn now what we want to do with this is at the moment i'm in it's i'm in b sharp but i want to perhaps look at b sharp well it's c i don't know why i've chosen that but there you go um Okay, sorry, I didn't explain that very well, did I? So I'm gonna look at a key. So I'm gonna choose a key, just completely at random. Let's choose G, G major. We're gonna write a song in G major. At the moment, this is all set around the circle here. This is this is gonna set the tonality of the whole of the, the song we're gonna look at, or at least the four chords. So in order to get the G here into the middle, it's just a simple right click, add to pad, and use as origin. So, do you see by clicking on there, it's now made G major. So whatever we look at, we're giving in the key of G major. Now, it also made me a chord pad as well, which is quite nice as we go. Okay, so one thing you could do is actually drag that straight into your project, apart from, again, let me, because I'm on a laptop, it's makes it a little bit more difficult to see. So I'm just gonna minimize that down again so I can see the piano. And if I want to add that G, I can actually, there we go, add them into the project. But what I wanna do, well in fact, Control Z, let's do that, let's have him in there. Now, we know we're in G, I'm gonna choose another three chords to go with this. And I'm gonna use, instead of the circle of fifths, which is great, so, if I'm in G major, E minor, fantastic chord, relative major and minors there, chord five, and it actually gives you the Roman numeral of all the main chords, and then you can go off on a bit more of a tangent if you want to. Okay, it's this proximity. So you see I had the circle of fifths. I wanted to show you this proximity. Now this is gonna tell me, I'm in G major. These are uh, in the family of chords, these are the closest relations, and as we go off, we go slightly more extended chords and more um, obscure chords. So I know I can go G, D, oh, <laughs> I'll say yeah. Ah, oh, sus, I like the suspensions, they're cool. Okay, so let's just see, okay, just completely Let's see if it works out. So, click on him. I'm gonna drag him. And I'm gonna click on something completely different. A minor. And 
what should we do? Oh, let's do this, because we were talking about sus, weren't we? So what what was the last one I chose? Um, uh, do, 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 well, okay, A sus. Add him in there. Get out a chord. Assistant. Take away the lower zone. Hit play, let's see what we got. Hope for the best. Okay, so I'm not too keen on these two. So perhaps what I might do is swap out this chord now. So again, lower zone, chord assistant, and it's still got me in G, proximity, and I can choose something else until I've got it right. So it's just a case of experimenting. And of course, don't forget you've got, you can also, one other thing, because these talk to each other so well, the chord pads and chord uh, assistant, you can actually take one of these chords and drag it over into the pad. And then you can drag the pad into here. You can also play these. So you could set the metronome off, hit record, eight clicks in. Oh, sorry. And then you, as you go, it's not quite so easy on a laptop mouse, but record them in and then you can get some more rhythmic ideas as well but remember you can change any of these so if I wanted the key now to be E minor remember right click assign to pad and use as origin so that's now everything now it's going to be my relation to the E minor chord and you can even if you wanted to experiment with Say I want a B minor, I can set that to assign to a pad. So right click on it, assign him to a pad, and I can experiment with how complex that chord is as well. And then record that in, either by, again, like I said, hitting um, record and recording it in, or simply dragging it. Okay, so we've got chord pads now. The circle of fifths, which is great to know anyway. So just experimenting with those, just right click and that make it the main chord and experiment in different circle of fifths and then the proximity which i think is wicked i think that's the best thing because you can see what chords were really closely related okay good luck